Well, hello, lovely humans, and welcome back to my channel. If you are watching this on Wedding Chicks or over on Facebook, thank you so much for stopping by. Today, we are going to talk about your guest list because this is such a big stressor, and I feel like some of you need permission or need help figuring out who you should or should not invite to your wedding. Now, before I launch into this, I'm gonna say that these rules do not apply to everyone, but y'all have asked for a video on how to put together a guest list. So if you hear something come out of my mouth and you're like, Jamie, you're crazy, ignore what I just said. If it doesn't apply to you, that's fantastic. But here are a good few etiquette rules that you should follow, a couple questions you should be asking yourself along the way, and some pro tips at the end because I just can't help myself. I gotta throw some pro tips in there. So without further ado, let's jump right on in. need to do when figuring out your guest list is to come up with rules. Who to invite, who not to invite, and where do you draw that line? Number one, extended family. The rule of thumb here is if you invite one cousin, you need to invite all the cousins. If you leave one out, it will make for very awkward family relations and it's just not worth it. If you need to cut your guest list, you can cut elsewhere. But if you invite one aunt or one uncle, then you need to invite all of them to avoid ruffled feathers, or hurt feelings. Number two, children. I get asked this question a lot. Is it okay to not invite children to your wedding? Um, do we have to? Is it expected? And I will tell you, no, it is not expected that you invite children to your wedding. However, if children are a big part of who your family is and you feel like you may miss out on having some family members there, or some friends attend if their children are not present, that's something you need to keep in mind. When deciding whether or not you want to invite children, you need to set, again, a parameter and keep that parameter, keep that rule. My suggestion would be, if you're looking to not invite children, have anyone 12 and under, unless they're newborn, be on the no list and 12 and up be on the yes list. Good rule of thumb here, if they can order from the children's menu, they can't come. Again, if you decide to make your age cut off 18 or 21, know that you have full permission to do that. But if you do it for one kid, then you need to do it for all the kids. One of the exceptions to this rule, however, would be your flower girl, your ring bearer, or perhaps you have nieces and nephews that you want to attend, but you don't want to extend the invitation to any other children. My suggestion would be have a very frank conversation with your friends who have kids, with other family members who have children, and say, look, you're gonna see a couple kids running around. They belong to my sister. Please don't feel offended if I don't invite your children, but I can't not invite my own blood. You know what I mean? So, like, I'm sorry we can't have all of your kids come, but hopefully you understand. Love you, mean it, can't wait to hang out with the family in the future. Another question I get asked a lot when it comes to children is how do you put that on the invitation? How do you say, don't bring your mini-me's to my wedding because I can't afford to pay for all of them? Fantastic question. As much as we love children, we are having an adult-only event, so please grab your dancing shoes and hire a babysitter. We can't wait to see you. There's a bunch of ideas on Pinterest, or you can Google it. Just go online and find what wording works best for you and for your particular situation. Number three, people who have invited you to their wedding. Do you have to invite them to yours? Can you get by without doing it? Like, how does this work? Rule of thumb here, if their wedding was in the last 18 to 24 months, you should probably invite them to your wedding and return that favor. If you were a part of their wedding five years ago and you guys don't talk anymore, you don't need to invite them if you don't have room in your guest list. Number four, this is a hot ticket one. This one's very important, plus ones. What is up with plus ones? Do I have to give everybody a plus one? Can I pick and choose who I wanna give a plus one to? And my response to that is very, very clear and simple. Plus ones, if you don't have a whole lot of room, in your guest list, do not give out plus ones to every single person who's attending your event. Instead, reserve plus ones for anyone who has been together for six months or longer. That means that they are uh, living together or engaged in a long-term committed relationship. They're married. You cannot invite the wife and not invite the husband. You have to invite both of them together. Another area that you should consider plus ones would be for your bridal party. They're already doing a lot for you, so throw them a bone and let them bring a buddy, just someone to hang out with throughout the entirety of the evening. Also, if you happen to have a random one-off friend who will not know anyone else there, maybe offer them a plus one. It's just one friend, it's just one extra person, that should be okay, but don't give plus ones to everybody. And number five, everyone else that's not mentioned on this list, coworkers, people from church, friends groups, etc., etc., etc. 
Think about the groups of people in your life. Same idea for extended family. If you invite a group of friends or your small group from church or your soccer team, you need to invite the entirety of that group. If you invite three of your coworkers instead of the 10 people that you work with, that can make things extremely awkward. There is a loophole to this rule though. You can invite those three coworkers if you hang out with them outside of your workspace. You can invite a handful of people from your small group or from your church if you hang out with them outside of that group. Also, encourage them to not share that they're attending your wedding because you don't want any feelings to be hurt. So instead, tell them to keep it kind of quiet, kind of on the down low, like don't go rub it in people's faces. Look, you're special. You and I both know that you and we have a very special relationship and I can't imagine my wedding day without you. Here's the deal though, I'm not inviting our boss. So if you could do your best to not talk about it at the workspace, that'd be great because I don't want to be fired. And now you've come up with this list, right? So you have your extended family, you know whether or not you're inviting kids, you've invited all of your coworkers because you can't figure out how to cut that list or whatever it happens to be. Here are a couple questions that I will encourage you to ask yourself as you're going over that list. Would I take them to dinner and pay for it? Because that's exactly what you're doing at your event. You are taking them to a very fancy dinner and you're paying about $100 a head. So if you wouldn't pay to take them to dinner, then you probably shouldn't pay to have them at your wedding. Again, there are exceptions to this rule, but it's just a good kind of thing to keep in mind. Attach a dollar sign above their head, and if it ain't worth 100 bucks to have them there, maybe consider cutting them. When was the last time I saw this person? When was the last time we hung out? Have I seen them in the last two years? If not, then you have my blessing to not put them on your guest list, especially if you're trying to be cognizant of your budget and not get too over your head with costs. If I wasn't getting married, would I see them in the next 12 months? Would I have any reason to hang out with them, grab coffee, go to an event, to whatever it happens to be? If I wasn't getting married, would I see them in the next 12 months? Yes, consider inviting them. No? then don't. And the last question you should ask yourself when looking at this guest list is, have they had an impact on our relationship, whether directly or indirectly? So family members obviously were present when you were being raised and they had an influence on your life. Friend groups, your roommate from college definitely formed who you are today, whether you like it or not. So that might be a good person to consider inviting to your wedding. The person who introduced you, yeah, you should probably invite them. Unless you're not speaking, then don't invite them. Because, you know, some of these rules like cross over into each other. If they have not impacted you as a person, your fiance, or your relationship, then you do not need to invite them. And finally, a couple of pro tips because I just had to sneak a couple of these in there. Let's talk about A-list versus B-list. I don't like it. I don't like an A-list versus a B-list, and here's why. I understand wanting to make sure that you invite absolutely everyone you want to your wedding, but that is a lot to keep track of. Like, oh, did I, are they A-list or B-list? I mean, unless you were extremely organized with your spreadsheets, that can be very difficult for you to manage. And like I've said in plenty of videos before, you only have so much brain space. Like, you can't create more brain, brain space. <laughs> Blah. You can't create more brain space to take care of all of these administrative type details. So one reason I don't like an A-list and a B-list is because it's a lot harder to manage. The second reason I don't like an A-list and a B-list is because that means you're tracking two different RSVP dates or you're hoping that you get enough no's that you can send the second round out, the B-list out, within enough time for people to get time off. That's extremely difficult to do and anyone who's been a bride before, if you're watching this video, Comment down below how many people RSVP'd by your RSVP date. I'll let you in on a little secret. 50% of mine had RSVP'd by my RSVP deadline. 50%. I'm talking family, friends, coworkers, like half of them had not said anything. And that is a lot harder to do when you have an A-list and a B-list. And lastly, the B-list people, if they find out that you sent invitations ahead of time and they're on the B-list, that can hurt some feelings. So. Do your best to create a guest list that you can send out in one fell swoop and not have to navigate back and forth between like, okay, wait, A-list person Jane Doe said no, but then she called back before the RSVP deadline and now she's saying yes and now her family of seven is coming. Oh shoot, we added on this B-list group of seven. 
we don't know what we're gonna do now. Unless you have a couple of friends who are super excited and know there's a chance that they may not make it and then last minute you send them an invitation or call them up and say, hey, I know you were wondering if you're gonna come or not. We were waiting to see if we had room. We have room, come on, let's go, let's party. And they're like, yay! But that's like the only exception. And that's not really a B list, that's like a couple random members, you know what I mean? Another pro tip, if you are not sure if you're gonna invite them to your wedding or not, don't talk about your wedding in front of them. That gets real awkward real fast when the time comes and they're checking their mail being like, where's my invitation? Because you've let them in on the celebration. Now, obviously if they ask questions, feel free to answer them, but don't go into deep, deep detail about all of the fun things that you're gonna do at your event if you don't plan on letting them witness those fun things. This also goes for like those friend groups if you're only inviting a select few people, let them know that you're only inviting them and not the entire group and ask them to be a little bit more tight-lipped about it because you don't want any feelings to be hurt. And the next tip, remember who's paying. So if your mom decides to add on 70 people to the guest list and she's paying for the whole thing, you might need to bite your tongue. It all depends on the relationship that you have with your mom and how comfortable you guys are discussing these things together. But if your parents or your partner's parents are the ones footing the bill, then that gives them a lot more wiggle room when it comes to figuring out who they can and cannot invite. Now, if you have room in your relationship and you feel like you can discuss those things, feel free to do so. And my last tip for you is as you're putting together your guest list, this is just like a purely like structural tip, try grouping people together in the tables that you might end up putting them in because if you end up doing a seating chart, your names are already listed out super, super nicely for you. So it's just a matter of removing a couple names for people who can't attend and adding in different names. So in closing, these are not hard and fast rules. They may apply to you. They may not apply to you. It's just some good rules of thumb to go off of if you're struggling to figure out where to make cuts on your guest list. And that's all we have for today, folks. Thank you so much for stopping by. As always, a huge shout out to my gal pals over at Wedding Chicks for hosting this video. Also, we are getting so close to 10,000 subscribers. What is happening? Is this real life? Like I can't, ah! So if you haven't done so already, like this video. Subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks for the modern day bride. And I will most likely be doing a giveaway of some sort when we hit 10,000. So if you're not already following us on Instagram, I'll most likely put some of the details there or maybe in next week's video or, you know, whenever we get closer to 10K because I can't imagine what is happening. Um, but yeah, so keep your eye out for some giveaway details. And uh, until next week, bye guys.